Welcome everyone to another Knee Pit gaming video. And in this video, we're going to start a new series for a game called Industry Manager Future Technologies. And this is a game that um, I'm excited about because I love this genre of games. This is a, a tycoon game simulation with some elements of strategy, of course. Uh, and this is a, a genre that I really, really enjoy. So I'm excited to get going on this game. I hope you'll join me for a Let's Play series that I'll be doing for this particular game. But first, I want to do this introductory video to give you guys a little bit of an idea of what is the game, what's it about, what are some of the options you have, where can you take the game in the future. So we'll start with the main menu. We've got our basic options of do you want to start a new game, resume a previous game, look at the credits for the game, a tutorial section, which I highly recommend uh, because it has A total of 10 different sections here, which are also available within the game as well. So don't worry if, you, uh, if you've watched the, one of the tutorials once and you can't get back to it. You can always get back to it. So you've got various tutorials. I highly recommend those as well as some that you can open up within your browser as well. So you've got tutorials to show you how to do it. I highly recommend those. It takes about 10, 15 minutes probably for you to do it, depending on how much time you want to spend with any within any one section. You've got the ability to save or load previous games. And then we come to our options. Now under options, we've got audio and video. Now for the purposes of recording videos, I have these turned down fairly low, but you've got your master volume or your main volume, the music within the game, which I have turned off for various copyright potential issues special effects, and then the ambient noise. Ambient noise and, uh, and special effects would be things like if you're around a city, then you'll hear construction noises or maybe helicopters, something like that. So those are your audio options. Let's go take a look at video options. Okay, your quality level, we'll come, to, come back to in just a second. Let's take a look at the resolution. First and foremost, it's gonna go to your default resolution from your monitor, and then you can choose full screen or windowed mode. Going back to our quality options, as you can see here, fantastic is the highest level. And we can go all the way down to fast. So we've got fast, simple, good, beautiful, and finally fantastic. You can turn on or off shadows, on or off V-Sync, and then you got anti-aliasing, bloom, vignetting, and uh, tilt shift. So you've got various different options there, but they're pretty basic. And I think this will suffice for the type of game it is because we're playing this game as an economic simulator uh, or a tycoon, and we're not really all that worried about the various graphics options, or at least I'm not. So I think those will suffice. Let's go ahead and move on and select a new game. Okay, so it's telling me that since I already have a game in progress that I was testing out on, that I'll, any progress that I have not yet saved will be will be overwritten. So you can see first you've got four levels of difficulty, easy, normal, hard, and then of course customization options. So if you don't like easy, medium, or hard, or easy, normal, and hard rather, then you can go in and customize it as you see fit. Under the world options, we've got a map size of small, medium, and large. I was playing on a small map earlier and it was, it was pretty good size. So I can only imagine that the medium and large maps are gonna be quite large as well. Number of cities, cities are important because that's where you're going to sell most of your goods in, in all likelihood. So how many cities do you want? You've got an option of one to three. Resource, resource quantity, each one of the sectors, which are, are the divisions of the land within the game, how much resources do they have? These are various things that you could either mine or grow. So we can go from scarce all the way up through abundant there. How many AI players do you want to play against? You can go from one to four in this area. So how much competition do you want and how many different competitors do you want? The market size, as you can see, in general, probably want to keep this closer to what the map size is. So how big is the market? In other words, how many products or services will be sold on a daily basis. Everything is calculated per day. So how much 
or how many of those products or services do you want to have the opportunity to sell per day, as well as your competitors, of course, and then your end goal. Now, your basic end goal is just no set objective at all. This reminds me of like civilization where you can choose a military victory that you're striving for, scientific victory, and so on. Well, here we have no specific objective, just basically playing for the fun of it, which is what I generally do. You can do gold miner, which you're, in this case, you're trying to reach a balance of one billion. A competitor where basically you annihilate your competition and world domination. You can be a builder, which means that you own at least one of each building, which could take a while. Uh, if you're trying to run a business and uh, expand to that level, and we'll get to that in just a moment when we take a look at the various industries that you can be a part of. Landlord, which means that you own 80%, which would be quite a bit of land that you own by number of sectors. And then scientist, which basically means that your technologies have, you've unlocked through research and development at least level one on everything. So that'd be quite a bit. All right, so We'll go back to free play and then you can start, choose your starting amount of money, 50, 30, or 20. So in this case, on easy, it defaults to 50. Uh, and you can notice that the denomination isn't in US dollars. And there's no option that I found to change the denomination of the currency. But that's not such a big deal because everything in the game uses the same denomination of currency. So we'll just call it dollars and, and go with it. Shouldn't be a problem. Research price. You're going to want to research various different technologies to expand your product lines and get into different industries throughout the game. So do you want that to cost a little bit or ever increasing amounts? So in this case, we're going to leave this on easy and go ahead and start a new world just so we can uh, go through the options and give you a little bit of the lay of the land. Now you've got options here for where do you want to start? What starting industry do you want to use? There are six available. Now, this is only your starting industry. You have the ability to go into any and every industry throughout the game. So this is only your starting point. So you can start in software, personal electronics, fashion, food, accessories, and biotech. Okay, I'm actually gonna choose software to get started. So we'll move over and choose the logo. You can see you've got eight logos to choose from. Looking through these different ones, I'm going to leave it here. And then, of course, you've got some choices of color. And you can also change the name of your company. Okay, we move on to what they're calling the managing director or the avatar that you're going to use for the game. You can see we've got eight choices here as well of various races and the genders. So everyone is, is represented here with an option. And I'm going to use mine as Gilbert here. And of course, you have an option to change the name as well. Let's go ahead and get started in the game. OK, first thing you'll notice is in the bottom left hand corner of the screen, how quickly time goes by. This is at the default speed. You do have a couple of options to make that go quite a bit faster, a little bit faster, or of course, pause time. OK, to the far left, we have our main menu button. Okay, we've got our time here. Next to that, we've got messages that will appear. This will show you things such as any new buildings that were in the process of being built when they're completed, any research that you're working on when it's completed, that kind of thing. Okay, and then next up is one of the most important, if not the most important, I think, screens in the game. And this is your production tree. Now, this shows you the eight different uh, possibilities for the industries you can go into. We'll start with, even though we're starting as a software company, we'll go ahead and look at them in order. First is the vehicle factory. So if you want to build any of the different types of vehicles, this is where you can see, okay, what am I going to need? Well, I'm going to need a vehicle factory, which you can see for me is locked because I did not choose it as my starting sector or industry rather. And so I would need to research that. OK, so I would need a vehicle factor here. Then if I go back through the production chain, I can see that I'm going to need chemical factories, metal forge, glass companies, textile factories and 
the list goes on. And then I can break this down even further and ultimately be able to see how many products I'm going to need through products and raw materials I'm going to need before I can finally build this car. Okay, and the way the game works is you will have raw materials, you'll have uh, secondary products or components, then you'll have your final, uh, your actual final product that will be sold either to cities or to the global market. You'll have the choice there. So the way everything works is that you will, you can either purchase these from the global market or you can set up the production chain to produce these on your own. Obviously, it will be cheaper in the long run if you can produce these on your own. So your profitability will increase in the long run, but in the short run, it's much cheaper to simply purchase these from the global market to get yourself going. All right, so let's take a look at some other options. You have vans, minivans, and buses and various delivery type trucks. Each of these has their own production chain that we can easily see as we scroll down through. Let's move on to biotech. You can see we have preventive care, which has various different types of vaccines. We can create medicines from sleeping pills to cancer pills. And then various different organs, which thankfully we're not hiring hitmen to go out and uh, take out citizens to ob obtain these, we're actually going to be growing these, as you can see here, on a farm or animal ranch. So you can breathe the sigh of relief there. So that takes care of biotech. Let's move on to the software company, which you can see I have unlocked by default here because that's the beginning industry that I chose. We have some various different types of software we can do from educational software to embedded systems. Now keep in mind, any of these, if you look at this and say, wait a minute, social network plug-in, that looks like a USB stick. Well, you can change the name of it. Change the name to anything you want for any of these products. Moving on to advanced research development, you can see we can make operating systems, do some database management, and then finally make PC or console games. Moving on to home electronics, we've got personal electronics. As you can see here, cameras and TVs, work electronics, computers, printers, and so on. And then finally, household electronics, which is security systems and cleaning robots in general. Moving on to personal electronics factories, you can see we've got communication, which includes phones, personal computers, which have laptops and tablets, vir virtual reality. So we've got VR goggles and smart glasses. And then finally, high tech things like drones. So as you can see, just through the first five that we've looked at, there is a lot of different products and various components and raw materials that you would need. So if you want to expand and do all of this, it's going to take you a while. Definitely. All right, let's move on to fashion. You can see we've got clothes, various different types of shirts and suits and dresses. We've got shoes. And then finally, things like handbags for accessories. Okay, under the food section, we've got dietary supplements, things like fat burners and protein drinks. And then we move on to synthetic foods, which are things like artificial fruit and artificial meat. I can't imagine that that's going to be a very big seller, but I'm probably going to be surprised. And then finally, we move on to the jewelry business because no game about making money and taking over the world could be complete without jewelry. So in here, you see you've got your basic gold, silver jewelry, and then accessories such as sunglasses and watches. So in our particular game, for example purposes, I've chosen the software company. So in this case, you can see I've already got the software company unlocked for me, and I have these three different products that I would need to research in order to unlock. So for right now, I've got these two items that I can work with. Let's go ahead and get out of here and continue on with looking at our menus. Now we've also got news area. This is a press release announcing that our company is now part 
of the world. And the good thing is we have purchased our company using a substantial inheritance from my uncle. Always good to know. Then we've got our three main items here for the company itself. We've got a company overview, which shows the name of our company, which we chose and, and could have edited from the main screen. Shows the company balance, value, as well as the value uh, from overall through the various values for buildings, how many sectors we own and what they're worth, and the various products and stock market and so on. Now, also of, of high importance is your brand strength. Your brand strength really comes in in relation to your competitor. How strong is your company versus your competitor? So as you go throughout the game, these sliders will go up and down as you are doing better or worse than your AI competition. You'll be able to see your revenue and your expenditures as both a percentage and then the overall uh, currency amount. We also have an option here to, instead of seeing the figures this way, we can also see things as a graph. Okay, so this is your basic screen for the company. Then we can look at our sector overview. This would be a list of all the different sectors that we've purchased, as well as any buildings that we've built on them. And then finally, our building shop. This shows the buildings that we've unlocked to this point, which by default, we'll have a research and development facility that we can build, a warehouse, a mine, oil well, farm, animal ranch, and then finally our main software company. So by default, we can build any of these, but before we can do that, we would need to purchase a sector. And we'll get to that uh, momentarily. Our resource inventory, well, we're not producing anything right now, but this would be a list of everything that's in our warehouses or is being produced and kept within our factories themselves. So we can see a list of that. Then we go into our market functions. First of all, the global market. This will tell if you want to purchase something from the global market. And as you can see, many, many, many different, different items here that you'll have the option to purchase from the global market. And it will show you based on the quality here. You can see the quality goes from one at this end all the way through 100. So by default, they drop it right in the middle. And it says that if we take silica as an example, if I want to buy a quality 50 silica, then it'll cost me basically 116, I'll say dollars, just because I'm in the U.S. and that's going to be easier than trying to call it by the default currency. So silica is going to cost me $115.99 per to purchase from the global market. Now, if I, want, if I already had silica that I had mined and I wanted to sell to the global market, I could sell, again, quality 50 silver or silica would sell for $94.90. And this number is not guaranteed to be higher than your cost. It may indeed cost you more money to, in this case, mine the silica than it would for you to sell it. So it is, it is very possible for you to lose money doing these things. Okay, so this is where you would come and, and if you want to purchase something from the global market or sell something to the global market. Now this changes dynamically. This price change will update each day and you can see the demand and supply amounts uh, that will change each day. You have graphs that you can show that will change day in and day out. So this is a very fluid game, very dynamic pricing. So it's not a guarantee that if you're selling something to make a nice profit one day, that it will continue that way through the rest of the entire game. Okay, if we look at the stock market, it shows both our company value, share value, number of shares, and so on, as well as our competition. Now, one of the things you can do, of course, you can use this to keep an eye on your competition. You can see here they've already started to purchase things within the game world, and so they're already started. 
they've probably got a few factories being built. They bought land and, and so on. So one of the things you can do here is if you'll notice to the right hand portion of this window, our share percentage is 100 percent in our company. So if we wanted to, we could raise money by saying, OK, current share volume is 1000. We own all of them because we own 100 percent of the company. Our share value is $50,000 per share. So how much do we want to get rid of to raise money? Now, we don't want to do any more than 50% because obviously any more than 50%, we lose control of our company, game's over. So what do we want to do? Let's say we wanted to get rid of half of it. Now that would be tremendously risky and we wouldn't want to do that probably, but look at the amount of money that we now can raise by doing that huge amount of money is available to you for doing that. So if we did this, we would go from 50 million to 75, but it would put us on very thin ice because if you lose more than 50% of your company, then game over. Something interesting that this opens up for us is that our competitor, we can actually buy shares in our company, in our competitor's company if we wanted to. And if we're able to at any point buy them uh, enough shares to get 51% of their company, then we would take over their company. So keep that in mind as you go throughout the game. Uh, but of course, in order to buy shares of their company, we would need to see what is available in the stock market right now. There are none available for us to purchase. So they're not trying to raise any money right now. So it adds an interesting dynamic to the game. Now, our next option is to take a look at market statistics. So in this case, we only have one particular city, which is located right in the center of our screen here. And this is what's going on now. For right now, we're not selling anything, so it doesn't have any price or, or uh, quality and quantity numbers for us. But in our case, since we're under software, the total software demand on a daily basis Again, this will fluctuate like everything else in the game. It's dynamic, but right now it's a little over 2100. We click on software and we can see that we've got some options. Okay. Various different types of software, which can then further be expanded to the plugin and embedded systems, two things we can make right now, others that we can unlock. Advanced items and then the two different types of games. But you can see how much of any one of these, for instance, the social network plugin, right now they desire 71 of those per day. Now we don't know what price they will pay for those. So we might make a small profit, a large profit. We're not sure right now. That's one of the fun parts of these types of games is figuring out what the optimal price is to sell these things at. And then you can see the various other items in the different industries that are being sold. OK, then we have our bank area. This is where you would go to take out loans or repay loans. So as you can see right now here at the bottom of the this particular window, we don't have any loans outstanding. But we could take out loans and you can see right now, depending on what size loan I try to take out, it will only allow me to take out a loan up to 50 percent or half of my company's value. So that's why you see 25 million here because the company is currently worth 50 million. So if we wanted to take that out, how long do we want to, how many months do we want to take this out for? And then it'll show us the various repayment costs and interest rates, very high interest rate there. So we better really need that money if we're going to do that. And then to the bottom right hand corner of the screen, we're going to get into the total value of your, your company as well as the, the balance. And then you're going to have some graphs that will continue to show you how your balance has changed or, or uh, gained or lost over the past six days, six weeks, and six months. Okay, let's go ahead and let's get rid of those options. You see you've got a help option, and then back to these that we were looking at earlier, where you can show the, the various different types of help. This is where if you had gone through some of these screens, then it will turn this option off. OK, so if we, we've gone through most of these so far in the game, 
But as you come to new things, there will be a help option that will pop up and you can decide if you want to see that again in the future. So in order to get started in a game, we're going to need to purchase some land. We're going to need to purchase a sector Well, you can see this particular sector. This is the area we would have to build in. OK, and since nothing is going to fit in these small sections, most likely, then those are not good for us. You see here. That's a nice size sector. Something to keep in mind on sectors is the closer to the city a sector is, the more people will be available for hire. So you can see here, we've got 1,184 workforce available for hire. But if I go out here, only 662 people are available because I'm getting farther and farther from the city. You also notice that there's a varying amount of different resources that you'll want to pay attention to. So if you need oil, you want to find a place that has a lot of oil. Okay, here you'll be able to see how much the sector will cost us to purchase your water levels. So nice water levels here, and then the soil fertility that uh, is particularly important if you're gonna use that for farming. So we need to purchase a sector to get started on. So we're gonna purchase this one. OK, so it subtracts the money uh, from our balance down here. Now we have access to all of these resources, including the workforce. So our first step is going to be to build something. In this case, I want to build a software company so you can see that I'm going to have some options on how to place it. And we'll go ahead and, and place this building. The arrow at the top of the building shows you where the road is going to be. In this case, I can rotate this around by holding down shift and using the middle mouse button. All right, we're going to keep this right here and we'll just put this down right there. It builds a road to connect us to the main road network. And you can see here on the left, it started building. Now, if I unpause the game, you can see how quickly it's going to build this. So we'd want to get started with our first building as well as research and development. And I'll just throw these down pretty quick here. And then we're going to need a warehouse as well. We'll just put this over to the side. So the way the game works is you're going to have your raw materials will come in to the warehouse, whether you have uh, have mined them yourself or purchased them from the global market. They come into the warehouse. From the warehouse, you will set up a route to your next factory, whether that's an intermediary factory that will further work on the product and create a component, or if it will go straight into the final product, you'll need to create from a route from your warehouse to, in this case, it's going to be our software company. And then once the software company creates our product, it will go to a warehouse. Now it can be this warehouse or a warehouse loaded somewhere else, located somewhere else on the map. But you have to have your supply chain connected using routes. And again, this is all going on, gone over in the tutorial that it comes with the game. But I wanted to give you guys a heads up because the warehouse is extremely important. And then once your final product is created, it goes to the warehouse, then you'll want to sell it. Now, we've already talked about the global market, which is located down here. We looked at this screen earlier. You can choose to sell your product here or you can sell it within a city itself. Now, you'll notice that let's get a little bit closer here. Not too close because I don't want those background noises to be too loud. But we've got four options obviously for, for us to build on. Now, we can choose one of these. As you can see, each of them cost one million. So there's no, doesn't appear to me to be any particular advantage of choosing one over the other. So I'll choose the one that's actually closest to where our sector is. So we'll choose one here. It's gonna cost us a million dollars. That's okay, we've got plenty of money right now. All right, see the clouds are kind of in the way a little bit of our visuals. We can turn those on or off. Okay, so then 
It shows our company name, and then it's building. We're at 38%. We'll go ahead and speed that up so that it can go ahead and get started. This is where our products will be sold within a city. So they'll come from the warehouse here. Okay, so we look here. This is the main information screen from within the city itself. Our trade center, we have room for nine shops right now, meaning nine different products that we can sell. And that's just on the first floor. We can also expand this both on the main floor as well as add additional floors for additional money. It also tells us which products within this particular city are most in demand. Also, which ones are the most profitable. So all of these, all this information is very important to you. Now we can open up our first shop, but before we can do that, we'll need to choose a warehouse and then the product within that warehouse that we want to sell. We're not selling any, or we're not constructing anything right now, but this is where each shop holds one product that you've created. So we right now have room for nine and then we can upgrade that as you can see from a three by three grid to a four by four grid. And then we've got room for up to five stores. So you can see a lot of products that we can sell in a particular city. All right, guys, that is some of the basics of the menus and the game itself, the different options you're going to have, the different uh, information you're going to have access to within the game. Hopefully that gives you more information that you will need to decide if, if you're going to purchase this or what, what avenue you're going to go down. Uh, once you get started in the game, hope you enjoyed the video and stay tuned for more industry manager future technologies.